Of course the world's largest sit would decide to grace me with its presence on the day I decide to film my very first skincare video. What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to be starting off our series on skincare with a DIY hyaluronic acid serum recipe. Now, most people don't realize this, but skincare is expensive and it really doesn't have to be. You can make most of these products at home for pennies on the dollar, hyaluronic acid serums included. And today that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So let's take a quick look at the formula and then we're gonna dive into each of the ingredients real quick before we get into the lab and I'll show you how to make it. So this is our formula. We're gonna be making a hyaluronic acid serum and we're gonna be making a hundred grams of this serum. now. Whenever people create formulas for skincare products, it has to be written up to 100%. So to make that easy for conversion, whenever you see a usage rate, because the usage rate typically comes in a percentage, um, we convert that to grams. So we're gonna be making a 100 gram batch. So 100% equals 100 grams of this product. So we're gonna need um, several things to make this. The first thing we're gonna need is a humectant. We're gonna need five to 10% of that. So that means five to 10 grams of a humectant. Humectants are um, typically ingredients that provide moisture to the skin, and they do this by drawing out moisture from the air into the skin. Now, in order for these ingredients to be Effective, they need to be sealed in by an occlusive ingredient such as a wax or an oil or a butter and that's typically by using a lotion followed after a uh, hyaluronic acid serum to prevent the opposite effect of having the water evaporate from your skin into the air. So we're going to need 5 to 10 grams of a humectant. Now the two humectants that I like to use are vegetable glycerin which is the most commonly used in skincare products. It's natural, it's cheap, and it's um, very effective. The only thing that people tend to complain about vegetable glycerin is that it tends to be sticky. So I like to combine vegetable glycerin with something called propane dial 1-3. This is a nat another natural um, ingredient. It's derived from corn, and this is also a humectant that is not considered sticky by most people. So if it's used by itself, it's not sticky. And when it's used with glycerin, it works synergistically to reduce the stickiness of glycerin while allowing gl glycerin to provide the product with um, its moisturizing benefit. So the next thing that we're gonna need is hyaluronic acid powder. Now hyaluronic acid powder is usually seen used at one to two percent in most skincare products. Um, I generally feel like 1% is good enough. And this is the ingredient that's also going to gel the uh, serum and make it that aesthetically pleasing um, product that everyone knows. So we're gonna be using one gram of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is pretty much a polysaccharide that occurs naturally in every tissue of the body. It's highest in the skin, hair, and cartilage, and the eyes as well. So this provides uh, protection to the cells, and it's a natural gel between skin cells. It serves as a water reservoir for the cells. Um, it lubricates the joints, and it can hold up to a thousand times its weight in water, which makes it a very valuable um, active ingredient, and it helps to uh, reduce aging by reducing fine lines and wrinkles and it also stimulates the production of collagen within the skin. So a lot of people like to incorporate hyaluronic acid into their skincare routine um, as well as their diet because um, as you age the skin's um, ability to hold and produce hyaluronic acid decreases so this uh, makes it difficult for our skin uh, to be able to hold water. So this ingredient also needs to be sealed off by an occlusive agent to prevent the uh, evaporation of water from the skin. So, you know, you just want to make sure that you follow it by a lotion or a cream or something so that you don't end up actually causing your skin to dry out and worsen the look of aging as a result. The next ingredient we're going to need is an optional ingredient. Now, I say optional because preservatives are 
pretty controversial. Um, we're not going to get into that uh, discussion today, but um, essentially, if you do not preserve this product, you need to keep it in the fridge and use it within one to two weeks. Um, also, continuously checking it to make sure it doesn't go bad, just like you would food. Now, let's talk a little bit about preservatives and their function. Preservatives um, essentially protect the product from contamination. Water is the basis of all life and skincare products are loaded with water. Water essentially allows for the growth of bacteria, yeast, and mold, which can all contaminate and feed on our skincare products and therefore our skin when introduced to it. Broad spectrum preservatives are needed to protect skincare products and provide up to a three year shelf life in most cases, depending on the formulation. Preservatives can be both natural and synthetic and each one has a specific um, product and pH environment that it is efficient in, but uh, the two that I'm going to introduce you to uh, work over a wide pH range and are fairly easy to use. The first one is natural. It's called um, Lewisidal SF Complete. And this one has a usage rate of 3.5 to 4% in a formula. So if you were to use Lewisidal SF Complete in a formula, you need to use it from 3.5 to 4%. I generally say for people that are starting off to use it towards the higher end, so that would be 4%. And essentially what this is, it's um, lactobacillus ferment and uh, coconut extract. Um, and those two ingredients help to kill off any microorganisms that are in the product as well as prevent the growth of new microorganisms as well. The other one, which is synthetic, which is very commonly used in commercial skincare products as well, is called Yuxil PE9010. This is 90% phenoxyethanol and 10% ethyl hexoglycerin. This is a very effective preservative as well. And this one, because it's synthetic and it's more powerful, is only used at 1%. I'm gonna be linking down to both of these as to where you can get them. I'm going to be using the Lewisidal SF Complete in today's um, formula. I find it works really well and it's natural and I feel like most people will um, also wanna use this one if they decide to use a preservative. All right, last but not least is water and any water alternatives. Now, like I said, guys, when you're making a formula, it needs to add up to 100% or 100 grams. So we're going to be using 10% humectants, 1% hyaluronic acid powder, and 4% Lucidal SF Complete. So we are going to need 85 grams of water or water alternatives to bring this formula up to 100% or 100 grams. Couple important things about water in any skincare formulation that you guys decide to make um, is that the water must be pure. It cannot contain um, any minerals or chemicals as this can destabilize the formula and make the preservatives um, ineffective. And if you're not preserving this um, formula, it can make it go bad even faster because a lot of the minerals and chemicals in water are also a feeding so source for these microorganisms. So we wanna make sure that we use only distilled or demineralized water. I wouldn't even use like fridge filtered water go uh, to the store and get yourself, you know, one of those jugs of distilled or demineralized water. Now, when it comes to water alternatives, guys, don't use anything out of your kitchen. Like, don't use coconut water that you have in your fridge. Don't use um, honey that you have in your cabinets. While they're used in skincare products, you need to get them from a cosmetic supplier because they've been purified and there's been uh, no contamination and the ones that you have in your fridge and kitchen can harbor a lot of microorganisms which can make their way into your skincare products. Just to give you a couple examples of water alternatives, this could be aloe vera juice, coconut water, honey, and hydrozoles. Now I'm gonna link down in the description box below of where I get a lot of my ingredients. Um, there's three websites that I like to use. One is Formulator Sample Shop, one is um, Lotion Crafter, and the other is Making Cosmetics. And these are the websites where you would purchase any of the ingredients you need to make 
um, skincare. They've also got a lot of formulas that you can follow on their websites. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these websites. That's just where I get my um, ingredients to formulate. I do get some stuff on Amazon and I can link down to anything that I get off Amazon as well. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple um, safety tips when you're gonna be making these products and that is to make sure that everything that you're using from the um, utensils to the containers you're gonna be putting this stuff in is washed with soap and hot water. And then after you dry it, um, spray it down with 70% isopropyl alcohol and also allow it to dry. Uh, make sure that your workspace is sanitized. I like to spray down my work area with 70% um, isopropyl alcohol as well. Your area does not need to be sterile. Nothing needs to be sterile. It just needs to be very clean. You also may want to wear gloves, a face mask, and a hairnet if possible. All right guys, I think that about sums up everything. So why don't we get started? Now, before we get started, I know a lot of you were asking to see my lab, guys. So here it is. This is where all of my supplement and skincare magic happens. So don't be alarmed. You don't need any of this to make um, skincare. You just um, need a couple things. Actually, I mean, this is the scale that I have now but this is the scale that I first started off with. So you're gonna need a scale that measures to 0 0.01 grams. And this is one of those um, small jewelry scales that I got off of um, Amazon. I'm gonna link down to this below. So if you wanted to make this recipe, um, I would just go ahead and start off with this, um, but don't use the same one that you use for your other recreational activities. Um, <laughs> and um, this is my uh, Joanne Lab mixer over here. So this just helps me mix a lot of things, but obviously you, you don't need this as well. Um, I was just using one of these hand mixers. In fact, a whisk works in 90% of cases. So if you have a whisk, you're, you're set. If you get one of these, you're set. Um, you can use metal bowls um, because a lot of skincare products are actually made in steel vats. So you don't even need um, glass beakers. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, um, this is what I'm working with. And that is my water bath. Um, you can use a double boiler on the stove whenever we need to make something that needs to be heated. So you don't need that either, guys. Um, this is just kind of what I've accumulated over um, time as I wanted to get more efficient and making um, a lot of these products, which I'll be showing you in future videos as well. All right, you guys, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to weigh out our glycerin and our propane dial. So since we're making 100 um, grams of this batch and we're going to need 5% um, glycerin and 5% propane dial, we're going to weigh out five grams of each. So we're just gonna make sure that our scale is teared. We're gonna measure out five grams of glycerin now, it's okay if you guys are a little over, um, I, that tends to happen to me, um, but we wanna just make sure that we get as close as possible. And five grams of propane dial. Next, what we need to do, guys, is to slurry our hyaluronic acid. Now, this is the hyaluronic acid that I used. This is a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. It's the one with one to 1.5 million Daltons. Now, you don't need to know any of that, guys. All you need to know when you're buying hyaluronic acid is the higher the Daltons, the thicker the gel is gonna be. So this is the highest um, Dalton one available on Lotion Crafter, so I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below. I'm also gonna link down one that I got off Amazon that does not state the Dalton level, but it came up with a very similar consistency, so you can use that one as well. So we're gonna add one gram of the hyaluronic acid powder into the glycerin and propane dial mixture. And then next what we're gonna do is we are going to slurry the ingredients together. So you're just gonna take a spatula and mix it together. The reason why we are creating a slurry is so that when we add the water, the hyaluronic acid does not clump up and it's easier for us to get it to mix. 
Now in a separate container, we're gonna weigh out 85 grams of water. And remember guys to use pure distilled water. Now if you measure out too much, what you can always do is take a plastic pipette and remove some of the excess water. And then last but not least, we're gonna take our preservative. This is the Lewisidal SF Complete from Formulator Sample Shop. And we are going to add four grams of that. Now you guys wanna make sure to be careful whenever using um, raw materials like preservatives. Generally, I recommend that you wear gloves and take all the necessary precautions per the manufacturer guidelines. All right, guys, now we're gonna take the water and preservative and we are just going to pour the water phase ingredients into the slurried hyaluronic acid. And then we're just gonna mix this together, guys. Now, don't worry, you're gonna see lumps of hyaluronic acid that's perfectly fine. Hyaluronic acid is gonna take a bit to fully gel up and dissolve. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this a good mix. And as you can see, it's already starting to come together, but we just need to give this time to hydrate some more. So we're gonna give this a good mix. Just kinda wanna show you guys what it looks like already. And now what we're gonna do is we are just going to, we're gonna set this aside and leave it for maybe a couple hours and then we're gonna come back and give it one final mix. So I just like to cover it with some plastic wrap to make sure that nothing um, goes into it. Now, since this is preserved, I can keep it out. I don't have to worry about it going bad. But if you did not use a preservative, I would just cover this with plastic and keep it in the fridge to avoid um, bacteria from growing in the product. Now we're just gonna leave this, set this aside, and we will be back in a couple hours. All right, you guys, so it's been about two hours, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we're just gonna go ahead and give the serum one final mix, and it's gelled up perfectly, guys. And look at that, guys, it's gelled up perfectly. That's exactly what we want. Now, this is at 1%. If you decided to make the 2%, it would be far more viscous, so that's something to take into consideration. And the benefits to your skin are not really said to be any better, actually. They said that 0.2% of hyaluronic acid is all you really need, but if we're looking for this awesome aesthetic look and feel, um, then 1% is what we're gonna wanna go with. And lastly guys, I just got this frosted um, serum bottle on Amazon that I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this into. Now I did go ahead and spray this bottle down with um, isopropyl alcohol 70% and let it dry before adding in the hyaluronic acid. All right, you guys, now for a quick demo. I'm just gonna take a little bit and put it on my hand. And guys, this rubs right in. It feels awesome. Just like the big brands you would get at the store, this is going to help hydrate the skin, increase collagen production, um, I typically normally use this on my face, but you can use this on any part of the body. It's just really gonna provide you all the benefits of glycerin, propane dial, um, hyaluronic acid, and guys, this is customizable. Like I said, if you're gonna add any water alternatives or actives, make sure to just take those away from the um, water um, portion of the formula and get creative. Um, 
always make sure you patch test before you try anything on and always um, discuss this with your healthcare professional um, to make sure that this product is right for you. Well guys, that concludes my video on hyaluronic acid. Let me know guys if you enjoyed this video, if you got value out of this video, and if you guys ended up making uh, this serum. Um, also, what's uh, cool about this serum that I forgot to mention is that I use this as a stock solution to make other skincare products, which um, I'll show you guys down the line. Um, but it's a very versatile ingredient, guys. So um, like I said, let me know if you guys ended up making this in the comments down below. Um, go ahead and do me a favor, guys, and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps my videos out. On that note, guys, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.